is a vice principal, professor and head of the oral pathology and microbiology department at GSL Dental College and Hospital, Andhra Pradesh, India. He is a board of studies member for the NTR University of Health Sciences, Vijayawada. He is also a PhD guide, a member of International Association of Oral Pathology. He was the vice president for Indian Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology. He is also an ex high power committee member for medical, dental and allied health sciences for the government of Andhra Pradesh. He was a PhD registration committee member for Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. He has over 40 publications in various national and international journals to his credit. He's also a great orator, has delivered more than 40 keynote and guest lectures in national and international forums all around the globe. His topic of presentation for today is on conceptual understanding of carcinogenesis and metastasis. Sir, it's truly an honor to have you amongst us here, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome and I want to first of all uh, congratulate the World Dental Conference organizing team for doing such an excellent work and uh, a very good response from all over the world. So greetings from DSL Dental College and Hospitals Rajamandri, the place where I'm working right now. Now today my uh, topic, as, all, uh, as all, all of you know that, it is basically the conceptual understanding of carcinogenesis and metastasis. Under these headings, I'll be dealing with uh, my presentation, the definitions of views, cycle like genes that which affects the cancer, angiogenesis, telomerase, metastasis, and recent advances, if, if at all. So the first and foremost, this definition of neoplasia, we have been learning this from second video. Most of the times, if you, if you recollect, we'll be mugging it up and we'll be just delivering it when a teacher asks in the examination. It's an abnormal mass of a tissue growth of which exceeds and it is uncoordinated with the normal tissue and persists in the same excessive manner after the cessation of the stimuli that are probably changed. The problem at that time is basically we don't uh, analyze the definition when we are in undergraduate level or sometimes in postgraduate level too. So, what I have done is I have just made the questions out of that def definition. Now, we, the first one is the abnormal mass of a tissue. Then the question is why there is an abnormal mass of a tissue? Why does the growth exist? And why it is uncoordinated with that of normal surrounding tissue? And why does the growth persist even after the cessation of this stimuli that has adopted change? If you get the answers for these, all these things, then the carcinogenesis and metastasis will be understood in a very simple way by understanding the definition. Now we'll see one by one the reasons for each and every one. Like why there is abnormal mass of a tissue, why the growth is exceeding, and why that is uncoordinated with the surrounding tissues. So coming to etiology for any cancer, as all of you know, we have chemical carcinogens, radiation, infection agents. They all act on the cell. So what happens? is most times the DNA gets damaged. In the sense, they get mutated. Once the DNA gets mutated, there is a transformation. And what does that mean of the term DNA getting damaged or mutated is mutation in the form of point mutation, translocation, amplification. There are so many. So these are one of your things which have to So when these chemical carcinogens, radiations, or infection agents, or biological agents, act on a cell, sometimes there is a DNA damage or a mutation that leads to tumor formation. And that mutation can be in any of these forms or some more exo, there is a frame shift, et cetera, et cetera, a lot of things. Now, what happens if there is a mutation? There is a dysregulation in cell cycle. All of you know that the cell cycle, and this has so many phases, the first one is G1 phase. This is a pre-synthetic phase, S phase, synthetic phase, pre-mitotic phase, mitotic phase, resting phase. See, when you read, basically, when whenever we are reading any topic, we feel it is difficult because from the childhood, we have been used to narrate the stories and 
our grandparents, everybody used to tell in the form of stories. That's why we like stories. We go to the movies every time. We watch movies because we know that there is a hero, heroine and villain, etc. But though we know that there is the same thing, hero will save heroine and finally kill the villain, we still continue to watch movies. Why is that so? It's because of the narration which they are doing, the way they explain the story. But what is happening in our education system is we are not making it an interesting way. We are going in a didactic way. So in a medical field, if you want to have an interest in the subject, because we are trained from the childhood stories, if you make analogies of the any topic, then it will be interesting. This is my personal perception. So pre-synthetic, synthetic, pre-mitotic, mitotic, resting phase. You take analogy. If you want to, somebody wants to construct a building, what the first thing do, they buy the land. That is pre-synthetic. Then once they buy the land, they should get all the material, like sand, bricks, concrete, everything. Similarly, the cell has to synthesize everything. They have to prepare the things for going for the cell to divide. Then there is a pre-mitotic phase. So once everything has been ready, the planning should be done very right. Then the mitotic phase, the construction work starts. And the finally, the resting phase. Now, when these things are happening in a construction, usually the what we call the main constructor or the owner will be coming and taking the whether the slab is proper, whether the basement is proper. In particular times, he will intervals, he will come and he will check whether the construction is going proper or not. In the same fashion, the cell cycle also has got checkpoints. Whether from G1 to H space, everything is going in a proper way or not, somebody has to check it. Same way we do it in our life, the cells also will do and the system also. So whatever happens in our day-to-day -day life, same thing happens most of the times inside our body. Only thing we need to correlate and analyze it so that it is easy to remember and it will be for long-term memory. So same way the checkpoints will be there, how the owner checks, here also there are some checkpoints. In G1, S phase, there is checkpoint, G2 phase, M phase, there are checkpoints whether the things are happening. Now, who is doing this construction or when do cells divide normally? As all you know, we need coolies, mestri, everybody to construct a house or a building and you need material. Similarly, to run the cell cycle, you need some proteins and enzymes. Now, who are controlling these are called cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases. So cyclin dependent kinases are enzymes. They are like normal coolies. They will get activated only when cyclins come and bind to them or activates them. It's like mastery. Unless mastery or the main supervisor comes and tells the coolies to start the work, though they are present, they will not know. They will not start the work. In the same way, cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases, they form together and they run the cell cycle. After the some period, there is breaks as a checkpoint and in the evening, once the work or the construction gets over, it'll, they will stop. So they are inhibited by cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors. And you need some genes which are regulating these cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases or cell cycle, they are called proto-oncogenes and then we inhibit the cell cycle or the cell division or the proliferation are called tumor suppressor. Now, these are very important. So cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases are the ones which are running the cell cycle with the help of proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor. It's as simple as that. Now, molecular determinants, when you develop cancer, so cancer develops whenever there is a abnormal proliferation or division of cells. When do cells divide? The next question immediately arises in mind, why do cells divide? Whenever there is a stimulation. What is the stimulation? As I said, it can be a radiation, it can be a chemical, it can be a biological or even internal growth factors. Whatever it is, if somebody stimulates something, cell gets activated and it is. So the, this cell cycle or everything is determined by the genes that promote the normal cell cycle, that is proto-oncogenes, which are called RAS, rat-associated sarcoma, or avian sarcoma, 
or semic. I have given two examples. There are other oncogenes also. He is cellular myoblastoma. And the next is the genes that normally restrain growth, tumor suppressor genes. Example, P53 and Rb. P for protein, 53 is the molecular weight of the protein. Rb is retinoblastoma. These are the where the first tumor has been identified. That's why they are called retinoblastoma. These genes that normally restrain tumor suppressor gene. Next is DNA repair genes, essential to protect the integrity of the genome. So suppose there is a damage, these genes will repair. They are called GAD45. Growth arrest, DNA damage, 45 is the molecular weight of the protein. And the last one are called apoptotic genes, which are called BCL2 family. BCL means B cell lymphoma. In whichever things, tumors they have identified this, the names have been kept like this. They are called regulators of the cancer. As you have a fan, in which amount of the speed it has to revolve, we have regulators. If regulator is been damaged, what will happen is it will not be under control. The fan revolves at its speed, either high speed or low speed, if not in a regular speed, in the speed you want to control. If these genes, this molecular determinants of the cancer gets that gets mutated, that will lead to the cancer. Now, what is another thing is, which all of you should remember, if proto-oncogenes gets mutated, there is upregulation of the gene. That means the mutation can cause two things. Either upregulation, over-functioning of the genes, or down-regulation of the genes. That means under-functioning of the genes. When tumor suppressor genes gets mutated, there will be suppression of them. That is, the function will be suppressed. Where oncogenes will get mutated, their function will be upregulated. What is the normal function of proto-oncogene? It is cell division. What is the normal function of tumor suppressor genes? It is cell inhibition, growth cell division inhibition. So there are two things which are happening. Cells are upregulating because of mutation of proto-oncogenes and cells are not inhibited because of tumor suppressor genes down-regulation. Okay? Now we'll see one by one, proto-oncogene, RAS. So what happens normally, we will see. See, unless you know the physiology, you cannot appreciate pathology. If you don't know the normal, you cannot appreciate abnormal. So first and fundamental thing which everybody should know is your physiology should be good. So there is a normal cell. When growth factors bind to these normal cells, I have given an example as a growth factors normally in our body. The RAS which is present in this lipoplasm, which is in GDP state. The GDP state in this inactive state or not yet activated. When some growth factors bind to the cell surface, the RAS, which is GDP, GDP means guanine diphosphate, will one phosphate will get, at, get more attached. So that is called diphosphate will become triphosphate. With this process is known as phosphorylation. In your textbooks, whenever you get a word phosphorylation means, that means one phosphate is getting added. That is activating. Inactive RAS has become active RAS. Now what active RAS will do? It will go and stimulate the nucleus to synthesize the proteins which are required for G1 to S phase. Please prepare the proteins which are required for G1 S phase cell cycle. That is what is normally happens. When the growth factors go away from this, suppose there is no stimulation, immediately there is an enzyme called GDPase, which will again bring back RAS to GDP state. But what is happening in cancer? In cancer, the GDP will transform to GDP, but the GDP will not come back to GDP because the RAS gets mutated. There is no there is no uh, listening to GTPAs or no functioning of GTPAs, the cells continuously proliferate. Now, the first definition, why there is abnormal mass of a tissue? Because the oncogenes are upregulated and the RAS is not going to GDP. It is continuously proliferating. It is not only the RAS. You have CMIC gene, which acts as a transcriptor factor. All these things will enhance the proliferation of the cell. The cells are dividing so whenever there is cells are dividing rapidly, there is increased chance of mutations again and again. It's as simple as that. If you start walking and going to one place, there is less chances of falling. 
if you are running and going there is increased chances of falling same way when cells are dividing normally there is less chances of mutation if cells are dividing rapidly there is increased chance of mutation as simple as that now we'll talk about tumor suppressor gene now in tumor suppressor gene we'll see the normal function there is one gene called retinoblastoma it will hold a transcription factor called e2f what is a transcription factor is a factor which helps to the help and helps the dna to transcribe into a protein that is a transcription factor so this e2f is not allowed to enter into the nucleus by the rb so rb always holds e2f so rb retinoblastoma gene is holding this e2f which is we called as hypophosphorylated or inactive state same thing when a growth factors stimulate the cell the cyclin dependent kinases will get activate will combine with cyclins they together form complex cyclin and cyclin dependent complex this complex will tell rp please release release e2f we need some proteins to form so that is hyperphosphorylated the cell cycle move from d1 to s phase this is what is normally happening but in cancers this rb gets mutated so it will not hold e2f anymore it will not hold e2f anymore so there is continuous proliferation now p53 p53 is known as guardian of all genome it controls lot of genes it's like a uh, principal or head of the institution or whoever it is the person who controls a lot of people is like a guardian of all genes normally when a radiation takes place when radiation takes place it damages the dna so the p53 which is inactive will get active we call it as wild p53 wild somebody will say that the person has become so wild what does it mean that means is very aggressive or very active so the wild p53 in turn will act stimulate p21 p21 is another protein molecular weight 21 it will say see i have found one dna damage please try to see what has happened p21 immediately causes cell cycle arrest at g1s phase and immediately the message will go to repair GAD forty five growth arrest DNA damage. See, I have arrested the cell cycle at G one S phase. Now it's your duty to repair this damaged DNA. So the GAD forty five will repair and the cell cycle progresses. But sometimes the mutations are so severe that GAD forty five cannot repair it. So what it has to do? So not repaired immediately. the message the p53 will give information to pcl2 family where there are pro apoptotic anti apoptotic apoptotic is program cell death so these bad batch genes help in pro apoptotic that means they help in apoptosis the p53 says see our gad 45 were unable to repair that one can you please kill that cell so immediately there will be but what is happening in cancer this is what is physiology normally what is happening we are getting exposed to sunlight several times so much radiation so much thing but still we are not getting anything so radiation in cancer suppose there is too much of radiation there is a very big impact so damaged dna now it is not wild p53 it is mutated p53 that means it is not functioning so no stimulation of p21 so when there is no stimulation of p21 there is no cell cycle arrest at g1s phase so no repair of damaged dna so tumor formation so if you see that tumor suppressor genes if they are not the guardian of p53 is getting mutated a lot of other genes are not functioning and tumor is getting formed apoptotic genes bcl2 family i said they have two bcl2 it is anti apoptotic it inhibits the apoptosis and bad batch it is pro apoptotic and both 
anti apoptotic and pro apoptotic are under the control of p53 now what has happened in cancer majority of the cancers oral skeletal cancer carcinomas and all the p53 is getting mutated the p53 is getting mutated so the cardium of the genome so this once p53 is mutated cad will not function your uh, bcl2 will not function all of them will not be in function because it controls so many things but the problem is the tumor is not only dividing it needs a lot of blood supply oxygen to survive so the cancer cells activate angiogenic switch by secreting vascular endothelial growth factor the tumor cells they start secreting their own blood supply by releasing growth factors these growth factors suppose there is a blood vessel going on the line there is a tumor here the tumor will be secreting growth factors please come i need blood supply because it's like a stimulation whenever there is a sprouting then immediately there will be a sprouting from the blood vessel to this tumor so the sprouting will be coming out so angiogenesis immediately something abnormality is going back immediately the body senses and produces anti angiogenic factors such as angiostatin stain endostatin and plasmogens they inhibit this protein don't go there it's not correct why are you going is that yeah i'm getting signals where vascular endothelial growth factors are coming from that i have to sprout these things as don't sprout so there's a balance between and these are controlled again by tp53 tumor suppressor gene 53 unfortunately this is mutated when this is mutated they don't are under the control and finally they'll get angiogenesis it's like having parents at house kids are fighting the parents say, don't fight i'm there don't go away no fighting if nobody is control them the beta yes or no the same thing happen there is a coming going coming and going and finally the vascular endothelial growth factors will come and they'll give the vascularity this is a small animation which i want to show which shows that how beautifully the tumor cells are multiplying dividing the green ones are all the tumor cells which are divided within your tissue you develop and you can see the blood vessels are vascularity is getting because it secretes vascular endothelial growth factors that will i said the sprouting will come from this is the main vessels which are going they start sprouting and tumor size increases huge big in size and finally the problem where it starts we are all worried about is the metastasis it spreads to the blood vessels and it goes to the distant streets And it comes out of the blood vessel and forms a new tumor. As simple as that. Now there are other things called telomeres. Telomeres are ends of the chromosomes. So whenever the cells are dividing each time, there will be shortening of the chromosome lengths. When the two ends of the chromosomes come to meet, there will be apoptosis. there is an enzyme called telomerase which will inhibit this action of telomeres getting shortened unfortunately the tumor cells have gained that function to secrete its own telomerase in an excessive manner so that the two ends of the telomeres are not getting short so the life span of the cells are getting increased so telomerase are the important part in cancer coming to the main important one we are all worried about metastasis because even if a tumor goes to a big size we have fantastic surgeons across the globe who does a beautiful surgeries and you can remove it the problem is with the malignant tumors is that they spread from one side to the distinct side that is what is metastasis here we are talking about a carcinoma metastasis what is happening we'll see the first so all of, all of you know that epithelial cells are tightly packed and they are tightly attached with desmosome and to the basement membrane they are attached with hemidesmosomes and the basement membrane is made up of type 4 collagen 
These are the epithelial cells, and you can see the small, small budding things. These are all the esmosomes which they attach. And epithelial cells are avascular. They don't have blood supply. They take vascularity from underlying connective tissue through a process called diffusion. Yes, I will take analogy of this. Now let's consider, in, in particularly in Indian subcontinent, when was I am talking about in late 30s, 1930s, and 40s, early Independence Day? Women were never used to work, though they are educated. Indian women are highly educated by their own manners. They used, but they never used to go for the office and uh, they do any jobs. So they used to depend on husband for the money. It's like diffusion. Epithelial cells are depending for vascularity, underlying connective tissue. Consider connective tissue as the male gender or the, the epithelium as a female gender. And if you also see females uh, or women, uh, in particular Indian subcontinent and all, when they go out, they always go in pack or together. They never go in ideally because why they do that? If you see an 18 years girl or a student, they always go in groups. They never go in singly, ideally. We don't see them most often. Why is that? Because in, from childhood, they have been used to that. Their childhood, their grandparents or father or brother will take her out. So when they come out to the college, they join the institution, they feel lonely to go out. They always call their friends and all these three four girls combined together, united, they move together. Either to the mess or to the college or to the court. They, they go anywhere to shops, the groups like a desmosomal attachment. Now, metastasis is spread of tumor from one side to the distinct side. So the first, these bondages has to be gone. They have to adapt a system that I should be, I should move from this place to the distinct side. So what is the first thing I'm having is this desmosomes, which are attached together with the help of a protein called catherins, e catherins. So there is a mutation in e catherins First of all, they will become very loose. Okay, they'll say, okay, I'm getting loose. I don't want any kind of attachment. And not only that, so the cells also got mutated. Like women, now why the women in India are working when compared to previously is that men started behaving in a weird, weird manner. They're not giving proper amount of cell, amount what is required for the households. The women started thinking that we should also start working, we should earn our own money. If you continuously irritate, anybody will get irritated. Similarly, here the epithelial cells are getting irritated with smoking, alcohol and all. There, it is the men who has got irritated them by not giving proper amount of money to sustain their work at the house. And every time they are depending on husbands. So some mutations have taken place. So what has happened? The women started coming into the society and they started working. Similarly, the epithelial cells which got mutated, they start moving to the connective tissue. They want vascularity. They don't want any diffusion process. They, are, they want their own vascularity and uh, they are moving down. And But the problem is there's a big basement membrane. The woman who entered in 1970s and 80s to work in the society is not easy. There is a big barrier like a subcontinent. I'm talking about subcontinent. There are a lot of issues and rules which say that, uh, no, 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 you people can't come like that. There are certain rules, constitutions, and a lot of things have changed. Similarly, the epithelial cells want to come into connective tissue. There is a basement membrane which inhibits them to entering into the connective tissue. The first thing they have to pay, break this basement membrane. The basement membrane is made up of type 4 collagen. Now they produce some collagenase, which will destroy this basement membrane, which is called, we call in scientifically, which a little bit of words we'll use, uh, matrix metallonoproteases, type of collagenases, which basically break down the type 4 collagen, which is made the basement membrane. And it's not only that, when you want to come into a new place, the new place, we need to adapt to that environment and to that area. So you normally, when you go to uh, Europe and all, our dressing style also changes. Similarly, in India, when the Europeans or the uh, somebody else from the Middle East or wherever the other places from US, they come here, they try to adapt the Indian culture for that particular time when there's tourism and all. Similarly, the epithelial cells, they are polygonal and everything. 
connective tissue cells are spindle cells. Now they need to change their shapes. So usually they start changing their shapes. As they are, once they break the basement membrane, they don't be polygonal. They try to change the shape, which is called EMT, epithelial mesenchymal transition. The cells will change the shape. And all this time they are immobile. They are not, motility is not their nature. So they also need to produce their own autocrine motility factors. This is like a self motivation. Come on, epithelial cell, you can move, you can change your shape. You can move down there, you can do the function, come on, activate. You need to go from there because you got mutated, you got irritated, you got by some other means. So these epithelial cells, now they are changing the shape. Now you can see the shape is being changed to something of spindle, which we call as EMT. Now they enter into the connective tissue. Once they enter into the connective tissue, why they came from, why they ruptured the basement membrane, why the cells have entered into the connective tissue to reach the blood vessel. So they are coming to the blood vascular system. Again, the blood vascular, the blood vessels, you know that they're made up of basement membrane. They have to rupture the basement membrane and they have to enter into the blood circulation. But unfortunately, the blood circulation, the blood flow is very high. That's why it's got blood pressure. They have never experienced that pressure. So you, you can see this in uh, working atmosphere of women also. Women complains a lot of saying, we didn't have this kind of pressure because they've never been exposed to this kind of work pressures when they initially, I'm talking about in 70s, 90s. So they said there's a lot of work pressure, which is very difficult for us to handle because they've never experienced it. Similarly, the epithelial cells are stemming and entering into the blood vascular system. They've never seen that such a flow in any So the majority of these cells will they die. The epithelial cells will die because of the pressure. And the next thing is they have some different cells in the blood vascular system, which are called lymphocytes. These lymphocytes will not allow any foreign invaders into the thing. So they start engulfing them, they're eating them. Like uh, everything, the epithelial cells also know how to come out, get out of this. As we know, when women are coming and working in an evergreens, one or other good nature guy will be there, will try to help the woman stating, I know you're feeling difficulty here because you've never been here. I will help you. Don't worry. This kind of things we'll see in the offices. Because some kind-hearted persons will be there. They don't want to trouble the woman and all. Similarly, when the epithelial cells are being engulfed by these uh, by the lymphocytes, these epithelial cells start secreting platelet adhering factors. Now the platelet starts adhering to the epithelial cells. So the epithelial cells are now being coated with the platelet, all with platelets. So the lymphocytes which are moving in that direction will think that, oh, this is our own platelets. Well, there is no point in engulfing them. because they, But unfortunately, below that, you have this malignant epithelial cells which are covered or camouflaged by this platelet and or platelet. Because we have been trained, our defense system is trained, never attack the cell proteins. So they will never attack the uh, protein. They will attack because epithelial cells also belong to us, but they're attacking, uh, attacking the epithelial cells. If you change your place where you're supposed to be, if you're not there, then there will be an attack from the immune system. A very good example is E. coli. E. coli is consist, uh, normally present in the intestine. The moment it goes to the bladder, the defense system gets active. You get bladder infection. Similarly, these epithelial cells are not supposed to be in the blood, but they came into the blood. The lymphocytes will not live there. So they secrete some adhering factors, that is platelet adhering factors, and they start rolling into the blood circulation. And they attach to the basement membrane, meanwhile, and they come out and form the epithelium. So loss of tumor cell adhesion, invasion of basement membrane, and extracellular matrix and invasion of blood vessels and lymphatic. So step by step it is happening. First, the epithelial cells have lost their desmosomal or e catherine attachment. They want to become free. Later, they tightly got adhered to the basement membrane. 
they start secreting collagenase, type 4 collagenase, because type 4 collagen is made up of this membrane, and they are trying to infiltrate into the underlying connective tissue. As they are infiltrating, they have changed their morphology from polygonal to spindle. This is what we say, epithelial mesenchymal transition. They have entered, they change the shape. As the women, as they go into the offices, they change their dressing from saris and churidas. They wear pants, jeans, everything, because they want to adapt to the environment. Similarly here, they have to adapt to the environment. It is easy for them in the spindle shape to be moved contractile auto-motility or auto-contractile property, they again break the basement membrane, enter into the blood vascular system, which will be recognized by the lymphocytes, start engulfing them. They produce a platelet adhering growth factors which will get attached to them and the epithelial cells start moving out and from the gene. This is what metastasis. I hope I'm very clear of the concept of uh, carcinogenesis, the tumor cells divide in the stimulation. If continuous, that is why we say hyperplasia is a rich, fertile soil for neoplasia. Whenever the cells are dividing rapidly, there are increased chance of getting mutations due to rapid divisions, and there is dysregulation in cell cycle. This dysregulation in cell cycle will lead to tumor formation or cancer form. And the cell cycle is regulated by cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases and inhibitors and proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressors. Now, whole set of genes are getting mutated because the guardian, so which is controlling for many of the genes, is P53. The guardian, if it gets mutated, most of the genes will not function properly. That will lead to your tumor. So summary of carcinogenesis and metastasis is been very clear, which I have told right now. Now we know the reason why the tumor cell, so the definition, tumor is defined as abnormal growth of a tissue. Why there is abnormal growth of a tissue? Because there is a mutation of proto-oncogen. The growth of it is uncoordinated with the surrounding tissues. So these are proliferating rapidly because of proto-oncogen. And the growth is persisting in the same excessive manner even after this cessation of the stimuli that has evoked the change. That means even if everything you stop the stimulation, the growth factors have been removed, everything, but this cell cycle is dysregulated, the tumors are formed. So we know each and every word of the definition, what he is meant for, that is what is a conceptual understanding of carcinogenesis and metastasis. Thank you. Am I clear? Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. That was a very interesting presentation and our uh, YouTube uh, viewers have also uh, complimented your uh, presentation and uh, saying that you've simplified the mechanisms very well, sir, for the metastasis. And uh, we have a lot of comments are saying good presentation, very good lecture, excellent presentation, absolutely love the way you simplified such complex mechanisms, excellent information, very good presentation from a lot of viewers on YouTube. So thank you so much. It was truly an honor to have you uh, with us and for you to share your immense knowledge on this complicated uh, topic. You made it look very easy and you simplified it for us. Sir, anything else you would like to add, sir? Yeah, just what I want to say is yes. just remember whenever 